All right, and welcome back, guys. We are live today, uh, doing another live stream, continuing from where we left off. It's a heroic theme that I did about two uh, episodes ago that I started on. Um, by the way, how do you like this new view? I'm going to be uh, switching from this view to another view. I've been playing around with that, and I thought it'd be fun to uh, see my face a little bit more. And then, um, you know, if we do like Q&A kind of stuff, it might be better to do it this way as well. But um, with that being said, there's a lot to unpack from uh, last time in terms of what I um, composed. And then I actually had a realization here that uh, I was thinking of my trills backwards. So I'm going to go ahead and start with fixing that, um, which means um, we'll go back and tweak uh, one thing, and then we'll start this new section. So um, before we start, let's go ahead and press play right here. By the way, thanks for uh, everyone that is here watching, uh, continuing to support. It's uh, been overwhelmingly positive uh, uh, to just be able to compose uh, live on air, in public, and uh, just getting a lot of good feedback from all of you guys. So again, thanks for everything. Let's go ahead and get started. So um, that's kind of where we left off. Uh, we have a little sketch idea right here too. I'll, I'll play that again. Oh, yeah, so that's the melodic idea, um, my plan was not to uh, actually put any type of piano in this uh, piece at all, so uh, I, uh, that'll be orchestrated out. So let's go back here. Um, I talked about the woodwinds. <laughs> so let's uh, go back here. And uh, I was talking with um, a, a, a very great uh, orchestrator, and he was giving me some tips on that. And as I was asking, him about the um, uh, trills, I answered my own question basically, and I was like asking, "Hey, like, how does trills work?" and blah blah blah. And I, I realized I was doing it backwards. Trills, of course, uh, you have a, a, a root note. So let's say it's a E flat in this case. Um, that uh, note uh, trills above uh, the note, not below. So I, I had it backwards. So all my trills are backwards, and that that's probably one reason why it sounds a little off. I mean, at least for me, it sounded off. So in the key of E flat, well, in this chord, at least, we use the E flat scale. So if you think back to your good old uh, E major scale days, um, let's see here. I got my flute going. Okay, so we have um, that E flat trilling upwards, and it actually should be a the next note would be a F, F natural. So it wouldn't be a E or F sharp or F flat. I mean, in this case, we would do a F natural. So we have to trill up to that note with the whole whole trill. Um, and let's actually, I guess we'll just go one by one on each one of these. So then the next note here is a B, a B flat key, or not key, but uh, the scale. And so we're going to have to do a half trill. So let's just go ahead and do this for the other three real quick. Um, oh, yeah. You know what? I'm going to move this chord track over for now. There's something funky in Cubase where if it's on the top divider half, it doesn't um, always um, intelligently get off of there. So it thinks that you're on there still. Okay, so back here we are on um, which instrument? This is a flute two. 
Okay, the next note would be an A flat in this case, so we're gonna change that to an A flat. Even though the let's see, does that change the text? I'm just curious. Yes, it does change the text as well. And then to this trill, it was only thank God there's only two trills right now to fix. Um, this would be a hole in that case. All right, moving on. Next instrument is the oboe. We have whole, and then this one would be half. Next, we have um, a half drill, G to A flat, and then on the chord of B flat, this would be a whole. Okay, let, let's press play on those four instruments. I'm gonna solo that too. Okay, good. And then um, I just heard something else that's kind of funky. So when it goes to this little spot right here, let's press that so you can see all of my MIDI. I think uh, there's something like transitionally from that note to that note. It might be better to uh, draw this in and kind of massage that area. I'm pressing the wrong button though. There you go. So we go um, like that. Okay. Next one. So this one also kind of starts strong. I think I just need to kind of sneak it in better. Oh, look at that. So yeah. Um, after I'm done with composing, what I'll do generally is go back into the MIDI and just make sure all the curves look good. Um, in this case, the curves are a little funky, so let's just kind of fix that as we go. All right, and anything else? Let's try pressing play again. Okay, that, that sounds good. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure I got all the instruments double-checking real quick. I think I got them all. So let's So it blends better. It's more in the background now, so um, like it's uh, a little bit inaudible, which um, is a good thing. Um, you don't want it to stick out too much. You just want a little bit of color. But I'm, I might just bring up that entirely. So let's just do this and bring this up for all of them. Let's just double check if I. Nope. So let's see. There should be a way to do that for all of them at the same time globally. Let's see here. Um, let's see here. Yeah, bring it down just a hair. Okay, great. Now, um, the next spot is how this leads out from this section to the next section, which we'll start today. Um, I was thinking when I heard back earlier this morning, it might be good to um, let this breathe a little, and instead of starting right into that next melodic content, we should probably um, have this grow even more, because, uh, I mean, there's this nice rhythm thing that's happening, this like little engine that's uh, happening in the brass right here. So we have, let me just hear that again. <laughs> okay, and something's uh, not right, so let me just double check that too. Oh, it says none. Okay, so let's do sustain on those. Good. All right. And um, of course, I'm looking as uh, we're doing this too, there are a few instruments that are kind of uh, being ignored and neglected on the wayside. So, for instance, I have the tuba playing this cool rhythm, but then the bassoon, on the other hand, is not really doing anything. So, 
you know, um, a, a fun little thing to do is just double maybe what the tuba is doing or even the horn um, or the trombone is another good option. But let's just try the tuba. And of course, those notes probably are too low. So I'll bring that up and double that in octaves. So, maybe we, we can ramp that up just a little more. So, and so I'm, I'm decrescendoing in the strings, it looks like. So, let's go into all those. And um, I could quickly uh, record these in or just draw it in. So, let, let's see this uh, line tool for this one. And then I'm going to, should I do a straight line? Let's just do a straight line. Turn the grid off. Um, do that for both of these. Yeah, I'll probably extend that note out a little bit. Great. Okay, next one. So this one, um, oops. Also, it's crescendo a little more okay let's go to the next one crescendo oh see this is the one that's a little weird um, before I do this crescendo this um, expression as well okay going to the cellos this is where it's like it goes down so there you go down and then up Sometimes uh, if you um, go down on the note first before you go up, it uh, makes the it, it kind of tricks the ear a little bit to think it's uh, growing more than it should be. Because um, you know if you did this, um, that's not really how uh, um, you know classical orchestras do their uh, dynamics. They they generally drop down. Uh, and then they bring it up, so something like that. Let's let's see. Okay, all right. Let's listen to strings again. Okay, good. Yep, that's better. There's a little bit of that crescendo helps um, before it, it maybe drop down in intensity a bit. Let's try. Um, Let's also look in the brass one more time. So this trombone here, let's see here, we have the line tool again. All right. By the way, if um, there are any issues that you're hearing, um, like technical stuff, and in terms of my volume, my um, you know, my microphone or sound just is coming out weird. Let me know. I, I've been tweaking my setup a little bit as well. So um, there's some, uh, always some learning pains as we do these kind of stuff. Okay, so let's try this. Okay, this one needs to grow even earlier. So, let's try something like that. Oh, I see. Uh, this is a uh, Jaeger, right? Okay, that's why. So on the Jaegers, because there's, only, there's like a very uh, sharp layering of um, these two crossfade, uh, or cro uh, the, the crossfade that happens between the two layers. It, it's more in the CC1 here, so we go boom. It's gotta be delicate. Cool. Yeah, that's that's about right. Uh, let's look at the this one. I could probably dial that down now just a bit. Okay, great. Moving on. 
we have um, these staccato notes too probably could uh, ramp up just a bit and on, on these ones staccatos are nice because you could just kind of um, bring up the velocities generally so let's do that uh, of course, there is a curve thing too, so I mean, we might as well do that while we're here. Like that. Okay. This is uh, the boring stuff that uh, we all have to do, <laughs> whether we like it or not. Okay. And then. Um, a quicker way, maybe, is just to use this instead. All right. This one, too. So we'll level that off a little more. Okay. Yeah, yep. Maybe a little too much there. Okay. Let's hear that again. There's like an extra note that just popped out. Oh, I see. Okay, so yeah, I was wondering about that. There's an extra note here on this little four and beat. So let's see. On these notes above it, I can just copy one of those. Put it back in grid mode. Okay. Good. You see how the. Um, what I did here is I, I did the tuba line, I gave it an octave above t for the upper brass to do their thing. And the bassoon is just doubling, and you can see how the, uh, nice the bassoon is um, doing that. Here, I'm kind of curious if I, instead of go to the a B flat on the bassoon, what if I just went down or even go to an F? Let's hear how that sounds. Yeah, let's just do that. That sounds a little better to me. Bassoon also needs a staccato type of um, articulation here. Oops. So right there, let's go to staccato. Okay. All right, we should be good. Let's go save that up. Um, yeah. Hey, welcome back, uh, everyone that's here. Um, it's a nice Saturday to to write some more music. Um, with that being said, I'm just going to ramp this up, this little section up right here. So um, there's a little melodic thing I had in my head. Um, let's press play and then let's play around with some ideas. <laughs> So like da da da, ja ja na 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 na. A lot a lot of uh, cool arpeggios happening at this next part. Da na na. Um, it, it needs to drive too. So da na. Um, let's start with some percussion. So now before we we hit that spot. Okay, so snare drum. And let's go ahead and extend that out. Okay. And let's record that in. And let's try again. Okay, good. Um, moving on. I think it'd be good to get like a little engine going first to 
inspire some more ideas here. So we have. Da, da, da. Da. Hmm. Should we do a march kind of thing? So like that or Let's try that see but um so I'm, I'm just emulating a flam there and then yeah let's try that one more time okay so that second time was better um, but I think I know I did. Yeah. Oh, this one I actually added a, a third note. Okay. So let's just copy. Let's copy that over. Okay. And um, here's a quick trick. If you uh, do the nudge tool, um, it'll retain where the the grids are. Uh, um, a relation to the grid so that this note here is just a little bit early. Okay, good. So on these middle notes, I'll quantize them Let's see, like that. Yeah, and then this one here is kind of hmm, it's a little early too, or actually late. Let's try that. Flams generally the the first note's really soft compared to the second note, so just kind of dial that down a little bit too. Like that. That, uh, one of these notes is late or early. <laughs> Keep getting it backwards. All right. Yeah. So uh, another thing I like to do is make these all fixed lengths. So go like this. There you go. Sixteenth notes. Um, let's press play. <laughs> And it looks like there's one other mistake here. Oh, I see. Yep. I think that's good. This one, let's just quantize that. Yeah. Okay. So uh, after snare drum, we, we have this drum. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Um... Okay, so let's start with the strings. Okay, on this, I'm hearing. Dun. Okay, let's have. We'll actually need to um, cut the note on four. Dun. 
Hmm. Yep. Let's do something like that. Like this. Bring this out. Da na 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 na. This note can be just a little ready. That's it right there. Okay, um, next note. Also, let's move this chord, these uh, chord stuff out of the way. Um, how much are we going to go out? I don't know just yet, but at least uh, four to eight measures, I would say. Let's do four measures. So this is kind of a transition. So um, what I'm doing right now is I'm going to create some colors and like a just a more of a forward momentum so that when bar 23 happens and this uh, melody will kick in right here and it's gonna be not as mellow as I was thinking it's gonna be more uh, driven so it's gonna have like a driving bed under it so I don't know um, you know as we're playing maybe I'll change that snare line too but um, let, let's let's keep going hmm Okay, and then let's change this out to um, maybe a staccato or staccato slur or a slur run. No, staccato slur. Try something like that. Um, might be better to draw this in. Let's see. Uh, triplets like that. Triplets. What do I do for that? Oh, there we go. Triplets. Um, and then I haven't used this in a while. I'm trying to think where to put the recording. Do I even have that here? I don't. So let's go to, nope, I don't know what I'm, let's go to here, nope, is it settings? There we go. Step MIDI input, there we go. And then on this grid, if I press, I think this one, there we go, and there you go. Yeah, something like that. Let's re-record that in. So I'm trying to get the, maintain the uh, velocity right there. Okay. Yeah, so we're gonna do triplets now. And um, I think I, we can just dial the, um, the curve a little bit too. Yeah, something like that. Might be a little too low. Let's try again. Yeah, that's the idea trying to think how uh, how this would play with the bars before that cool on this guy I'm not sure if I like the well actually it's probably back in legato still that's why it sounds weird um, if I change that to staccato slur how would that sound Oh yeah, okay. That sounds better. 
So I don't know if the uh, velocity really does anything there. Well, let's re-record that sin again one more time. Okay, that's better. Yeah. Might be a little too loud still, but let's go ahead and copy that into the next one. So I believe these two are the same. One of these just doubled. There you go. Something like that. Da -na -na. Yeah, let's give it a little more energy on that last note. Da -na -na. So the crescendo happens. Drop, boom, and then it goes back in. I wonder if I can change this to like a portamento, if that sounds better. Two, three. Yeah, that doesn't really do it. Maybe a marcato. Yeah, or the, the tash shape. Let's do uh, Marcado and just bring down the velocity a bit. That's kind of cool, huh? Yeah. Maybe here too? Or it might sound too strong, but. Um, two, three. That, was, that sounds kind of short. Let's try detaching on this one. That sounds good. Okay. Yeah, so um, that there's an engine kind of happening. I hope you guys can see what I'm uh, doing or going with on this one. And then let's go ahead and let's just copy that over on this. So let's just uh, get rid of the curves. Doing a lot of shortcuts. Okay. All right, so we got that for four bars. All right, okay. What else can we do? On the Ola line. Oops. On this one, let's see. We'll harmonize. Let's go. So we'll start on F. And uh, because we're in B flat, I think we're in B flat. Let's just put it in. So let's bring this over to either D or B flat. Let's do D. Oh yeah, and then we'll change that articulation to a, um, oh, this one doesn't have stock uh, staccato slur. So the next best thing would be either marcato or spiccato, I think. Just doesn't have that energy that the strings have, or the upper strings. So marcato. Hmm. This takes a little more finessing. So uh, maybe Mercado on the first note, uh, or like maybe these middle notes here, since they're all D, which is nice. Um, let's just change that to staccato. All right, let's turn this off. Yeah, like that. Uh, anyone use a meta grid by chance for editing uh, their notes quickly? If you do, let me know. Um, I'd love to hear your ideas on that. Because I know there's uh, apps that um, can edit stuff on the fly. And, and what I just did right there is I had to manually click on every beat of the third partial on that triplet. And um, that takes time. So if, if there's a... Anything, you guys have any tips on going faster on that? Let me know. OK, 
Okay, so I brought the, the dynamic down a little bit. Okay, cool. Yeah, so nice little um, heroic type of sound. And then you got cellos too. Uh, before we change that over, let, let's play back from the top of that section. I'm just wondering if this is the best line or is there if there's anything to expand on that. Maybe uh, we'll make a one variation. So on the second bar. Um, yeah. Let's do that. Okay. Okay, and then also with the viola line. Um, on the viola, let's see, we got. B flat, G, and F. Alright, and let's do that for this one too. Okay, good. Alright, next. Um, yeah, then uh, Vista strings, unfortunately, well, they do have kind of like a staccato note if you if you quickly press it but it's not a key switch library I mean it might it might sound good to layer that too so let's just do that real quick and hmm I'm wondering if I should just delete these notes right before it and I just realized there's no viola line too so I didn't double that from last time um, why not? So we'll, we'll actually copy that over from 18 here. Uh, let's use the range tool. Like that. Okay. Oh, but the, what do you call, the curves when you glue it, it does this kind of weird thing, huh? Okay. Yeah. That sounds okay. Um, you know, of course, we probably do want to do something like this, where you just you can draw in or record that in, um, something like that. Oops. All right, something like that. kind of 
of cool. Um, uh, it sounds kind of loud, but let's let's kind let's keep it there and see how that would bounce with uh, the low end stuff. Okay, we got cellos. Uh, let's also put that viola line, and so I think I just need to um, go back even more, and let's duplicate what's happening here. Um, let's just do another line tool. And we'll duplicate that. So I'm pressing out and I'm copying that over. Oh, and let's see. Yeah, there are no curves in the, on this side. So I'm just seeing if I need to avoid that uh, gluing thing and messing around with the curves again. But I think we're good. Let's listen to the viola line by itself in Vista. and that one doesn't sound as good um, but you know layering that might just give it a little more thickness and body uh, and also one thing I could do well before I do that let me fix this guy so I guess I do this on both the viola parts so I need to fix this there should be a, a extra note right here so hmm, let's cut this Let's go ahead and well, we'll keep that. Um, aha. Yeah. So there needs to be a little more growth here. Duh. And then duh. Is it? I like a accent and note right there. And then same on this. Uh, wait, whoop. Okay, let's go to the other one. Down. And then down. Okay, alright. And then what I was saying is, uh, going to Vista. Oh, first off, let's make sure we have that guy on. Um, let's turn this guy down a bit in terms of the length. Maybe too much. Cello can do something. Let, let's skip cello for just a sec. Um, let's go to some brass. And then I, I might want to revisit the um, this line into the woodwinds. But let's go back here now. Start with the tuba. And um, as you notice, I don't have any bass, huh? So <laughs> that's something I'll need to maybe uh, sneak in as well. So, oops, I'm on the wrong note. Okay, so we have, Let's change this articulation to a legato. That's what I'm hearing, just a nice simple bass. Yeah. I don't, um, it might be too short, but I think if we shape it, it it'll sound better. So let's shape that. Okay. Like that. 
that. Like that. I think I did that better the second time, so um, I'll just bring that in a little bit. All right. So there's that. Boom. Anything else? Like like a double tongue. Boom. Maybe. We'll come back to that. Um, let's move on. Trombone. Same idea. I wonder. I could probably just copy this in. This one we have. Um, that okay so let's do this hmm it's not deleting oh okay there we go and then we'll Sorry, I pressed the wrong key. There we go. Okay. Something like that. Uh, let's look into this. Oh, yeah, okay. I like that brassy sound for this section, so we'll bring up that CC1 on that. Hmm. So kind of sneak that in here. On the second one, though, it might be too abrupt or too. Yeah, like just too strong. So kind of do that sim similar curve going up and then over. Let's hear yeah, how that sounds. Maybe a little earlier and then taper off. I think it's, uh, that's, not, that's probably going to be good. Let's hear one more time. Good. Yeah. Okay. Snare. I don't know about snare. I mean, it's very majestic sounding. It, it, it very well works. Um, I just wonder if it's not busy enough. But let's see. There is something weird sounding here. Let me just double check. It's probably this note. Yeah. Well, there's also a flam note in uh, this sample library. So let's uh, turn the sound back on here. I just wonder if that's that'll be better. Just tweaking here. Okay. Yeah. Hey DC. Hey, thanks. Um, thanks for stopping by. I hope you're uh, getting something out of this. So let's see here. Going back, we have the brass. We got the strings. We got some snare thing going on. I think. Um, the most logical thing is continue the brass for now, and then we can go to the woodwinds, and then let's go back to the percussion and, and work on these four bars again. So 
Um, let's see, let's see what the brass is doing again. Okay, so we got that. Um, after the locomotion there, we could probably hmm we could we could do something similar and keep that going, or we can do long notes, or we can follow what the strings are doing. Let's see. <laughs> Maybe where the the brass, where the tubas uh, do this brawl, um, it, maybe they can start like two bar, two beats in, something like that. So let's go back to either Jaeger or this. I think both of them would be good actually. Um, another one is. Metropolis has a really good trumpet thing. So let's turn that on. Okay, and then let's see here. We have staccatos. Uh, what's the last note? Okay, so we're on F. Okay. Like that, like a, a double tongue or triple tongue there. One, two, that's kind of cool, huh? Okay, and also let's hear how that sounds on this instrument. So we have uh, Jaeger's trumpet. So I have some staccatissimos. So let's uh, let's start there. Da -da -da. We have probably what grid mode, um, like thirty second notes. So we have something like that. Let's go over to beat three. Some of my grace notes there. We have B flats. Something like that. And then, oops, uh, I pressed the wrong key again. So on this one, let's go one, two, off on 20. Uh, Staccatissimo, let's do either that or Portado. Okay, let's go back to. Uh, it might be too much. Are these 30 second notes? I think so. So, or I'm on 64 notes, that's why. So let's go back and bring these guys over. That's better. Okay, and right, something like that. Um, on these ones, they don't have to be exact, so I feel like maybe we scooch them in a little bit and stretch them out a little bit, see how that sounds. Something like that. And if you do that for all of them, it has this nice smeared effect. I, I think it sounds cool. So let's go over to the next one. I'm, I'm curious how the EWO or East West Opus sounds. So let's uh, go and see what articulations they have. So I have um, some effects that are kind of cool, rips. Let's just try, hmm. This one doesn't have staccatos, huh? That's funky. Oh, you know what? I think I know why. I'm on the wrong patch which I need to fix. Um, let's do 
trumpets. Okay, and then that way I should have these. Okay, the basics. Da -da -da -da. We'll see here. Oh, Marcado. Hmm. <laughs> this one you can't really even hear. A little bit better. Legato. Yeah. Also, dynamics might help. Okay, so what's wrong here? Their uh, staccatos aren't as clean. Wow. I might just have to get away with just two notes here. Yeah. So that's not as good. Um, let's go to the Metropolis and let's just kind of mess with that again. That sounds better. Okay, so let's do staccato, marcata longer. Okay. Let's hear how that sounds. Okay, so maybe this needs to move over. Like, uh, there, there's a hole right here, right? So maybe I can do this instead. That's what that's the solution. So let's go over. All right, hey Lori, thanks uh, DC. Sounds very regal. Yes, <laughs> it does. Um, trying to get. I'm. I, I was watching the Olympic ceremony yesterday, and you know, listening to John Williams is. Uh, Olympic fanfare stuff, and it's very inspiring. So I'm, I am being influenced by that sound right now. So let's see here. Let's go and change the other instrument. I didn't realize. Um, so like if I do this and I click on this guy, sometimes I forget to unclick it again. Okay, so got that long note. I don't know if this can lo uh, hold for a bar. Let's see. Kind of cool, because uh, if I do sustain, uh, suspended, or sustain, I mean, and then crescendo is another good one. Um, I'm not sure of how good sustain, sustain sounds. Yeah. Two, three. Let's try again. Again. Huh. Uh, okay, Portado is cool, but it only holds for so long. So let's try this one. Yeah, that's uh, not as cool, huh? If I do this, let's see how it sounds. Man, that's tough. Oh man, it's like barely getting to that. And um, it works though. I'm lucky because like in this tempo it works, but on a slower tempo it might not work. Okay. And um, we'll mess with the dynamics here as well. Cool. Okay. 
great, great, great. Moving on. Um, da -da -da. Horns, next. I might have to keep the the Jaeger stuff going. So on this one, I might do two notes. Okay, we're on portados, staccatissimos. Let's hear that together. I'm gonna cut that off a little bit. Okay, let's listen to brass. Trombones. So trombones are playing with the tuba. Horn and trumpet are switching off. Am I missing anything else? Um, I think I can layer the horn with something else too. Let's let's do that. Um, we have again Metropolis horns, which would be really nice. I'll do the three horn. Yeah, let's hear that sounds. Uh, that's probably still loading. Um, by the way, if you guys are uh, interested in switching over to the Vienna Ensemble template, um, I, I got this working uh, about a month ago, and then I just decided, okay, I'm just going to replace everything I had in my uh, Cubase template, which is like uh, just those instrument tracks. And then I went back to the old school method where you have MIDI tracks and whatnot uh, with the audio outputs. Um, it's really been a game changer, at least for me, in the last uh, few weeks here. I, I really like this setup now. This is the second time going back to be an Ensemble Pro. Um, I, I used it. I, I, I just kind of pushed it away. Um, then I did the Cubase template for a while, but then there's some downsides on that as well. Then so I went back and I kind of merged the best of both worlds that I thought using a new technique. Um, I, I have Guy Roland to thank a lot because he had this video where he talks about the uh, disabling and enabling VST stuff. Uh, there's a, a button that you can just press to turn on on and off the ensemble instances. And so you can save a lot of RAM that way and, and still kind of be a uh, module. Um, it's like a modular setup. So let's do this. Cool. Okay. I'm kind of curious though, if, if I maybe put a crescendo on one of these. That's kind of cool too. Um, That's a whole bar, that's like perfect. That's that's a better sound. Um, on I think I'm gonna emulate that with the other ones too. So the thing is, that sounds nice. Um, and if I had more juice, I could probably crescendo it with other curves. I'm, I'm gonna try this one though. Uh, crescendo longer. Hmm. I almost need like two of these. So one playing to sustain, one not. That's tough. Um, yeah, I don't know any uh, quick fixes for that because normally I would just double the uh, notes and then, uh, or duplicate the track and do something like that. So that's the downside of the Vian Ensemble Pro. Uh, you're stuck with what you have and you just kind of have to creatively work within that field. But let, let's try, let's hear the brass uh, with that crescendo now. Okay, so 
on this one I can't uh, I'd, I'd be more comfortable doing this and going back into my VE Pro setup so let's go let's take a trip over on this side on the brass um, as you'll see I have two instances for those who are new to this um, series and I am going to my brass which is way up here and let's do um, was it yeah Metropolis horns so it's orchestral tools um, what I need to do is bring up the volume oh man it's already up so what can I do what can I do maybe bring up a little bit of this a little bit of this a little bit of that that way I can drop this down a little bit I can go uh, back to this screen and let's bring that down let's bring this down and then that way I can go and then just start crescendoing upwards something like that it's a dramatic crescendo sound okay and then also this needs to go up for the first part three and okay So that's happening. I think that's good. And let's move on. So woodwinds. On the woodwinds part, we have strings kind of doing this. Hmm. So what to do with the woodwinds? I have a little cheat sheet. So the cheat sheet kind of gives me some ideas. I have the Hollywood uh, Winds Combo. And then I also have this one. Uh, where do we go here? Uh, like this. Like this. Open that up as well. And um, if I can save time, it'd be nice to just have some woodwinds all playing in unison something. Let's see, uh, we could do runs, like a scale run, um, like a major scale. Uh, that's one idea. The other idea would be doing kind of like a John Williams E.T. kind of thing, like -ding, -ding, um, like some sparkling, uh, -ding, -ding, like a quarter notes, something like that. But uh, let's, let's try this idea first. Um, something's weird here. There you go. That's kind of cool. Uh, another thing is... Nope. This chord tremolo is cool. Something like that. So trills. Trills are really good for something like this. Uh, and then the other idea would be the, the John Williams kind of sound I was talking about, which I am not uh, no, nowhere near uh, as... Uh, sophisticated as I, I sound myself to be but the idea would be to get like a you know like a quarter note type of sparkly sound so I don't know how to achieve that honestly um, so I'm just gonna play around with that for a minute or two and if I can't get anything we'll just try one of those other two options um, so let's try one of these run staccato patches and 
Let's go an octave higher. Something like that. Right, or maybe another articulation. So three notes. F, G, A, B flat. Let's try that. That or this one sounds too synthetic to me. Um, what else do we have? We have hmm. That sounds kind of funny too. That sounds better though. Uh, in context with everything else. Two, three, four. All right. Let's see. On this, let's see. We have run staccatos all the way through those. Good, good, good. Three. Okay. All right, and then we could do it on all quarter notes, but I, I just did every measure just for a second. You know what? Let's do a combination of the two. Let's do. Let's do uh, trills leading into the snap bar. So you go and then like a trill kind of thing so uh ooh, let's see let's do trills on this one and okay so again if, if you were here in the very beginning of this episode i talk about how i got my trills mixed up and i did it the opposite so the bass note is b flat and let's see if i'm a uh, in b, a b flat already i'll want to do a, a whole trill Although, oh wow, I might need to do a piccolo because th this one doesn't have um, a whole trill on that note. Okay, so let's just bring that up here. Okay, whole trill that. Let's hear how that sounds. Okay, cool. And I still have run staccatos on Piccolo. Cool, yeah. Uh, score for uh, East West Opus. Or. Let's go down. Uh, hmm. Let's do that again. So, uh, that's what it sounds good to me. Let's try that. fast though. Uh, let's just record that. So we go. Yeah. Uh, go in, go in, something like that. And the bar before is trill. So let's change this over to staccato. Uh, run staccato. That or uh, I also have this articulation, the run slur.
Anyways, that's the idea. Then let's hear how the second bar would sound. So let's do this. Uh, let's also record. Oops, hello. Let's record all this right here too. Like that. Or we can just program it, I think. And then on this one, let's record it. Oh yeah, go an octave lower on this one. Okay. Hmm. Didn't know. I wonder if this note should be a staccato or marcato note. Okay. Two, three, four. short and then also this note here should be a staccato as well okay yes it's coming along it's coming along so now let's go to these other instruments and what I need to do is just kind of clean this up so let's go right about there and let's go about here let's delete that that way I can just copy this in Troop. like so although I don't think I copied them in the same time yeah okay it was a little off offsetting okay going to the other instrument so I might have to change the notes even the flute too that's cool um oboe Sounds good. I mean, I feel like it's a little loud, and uh, but let's see, let's see what we could do there. Let's bring that down. Um, let's see here. We'll go like that. There you go. Oh, that's right. Okay, so I was just doing a shortcut key to bring these two things down. Like that. Yeah, cool. Let's do stock on this one. That sounds more natural. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing about the samples. You just you don't know how it'll sound. So sometimes you just have to go with things that don't make sense. Um, before we go to the clarinets, let's just hear these notes. Okay, so let's say I uh, double the flute and oboe and then on flute two and clarinet, let's do different notes. Just hear how it sounds. So we got F, G, A, B flat. Uh, so if we were to go down and do like, and yeah, so trill on the F note, then what notes do I have to play before that? So let's do um, E flat, E flat. Cool. 
Sounds good. So here, let's go back to the run staccato. Boom. That, uh, that note's kind of loud. Could be the oboe as well. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm, I'm getting my instruments mixed up. There we go. That's what I need. That's better. Yeah, so it's just a velocity for that one on a clarinet. I was on flute 2 on accident. Okay. <laughs> That's it. That's the sound. Let's do it again. So we have and then uh, repeat it one more time. Let's put make sure we're on the grid mode though, shall we? Right about there. Um, also, right there, let's see, one, two, let's turn that off, or the curves, delete all those, and then let's go to the next bar, um, I think it's right here, okay, so I just copy that over, quick copy and paste. Same thing with the trumpets, um, although, let's see, let, let's hear that in context. I, I think I want to do something different or like have it play more in this area. Oh, okay, let's see here. What, oh, I know I did wrong. This was early by half a bar. There we go. All right, so there's that. Anyways, uh, that threw me off. Let's play again. Two, three, four. Okay. Oh, sorry, I I'm pressing save. <laughs> That might be just so rich enough that you don't really need anything else. Like that's what I was thinking. Something where it's holding. But I feel like this is a stronger effect, just keeping it more simple. So what I'm gonna do now is copy that over here. Uh yeah, one bar or one beat. Okay, all right, it looks like we have our transition now. Um, the only other thing I would say is uh, we may, might need to balance out some of the instruments and then add some more battery type of uh, percussion stuff, so. Yeah, so we definitely need some cymbals, some crashes, timpanis, all of that. Um, Let's start with timpani, and we'll do a timpani roll. Just looking if I have a timpani roll back here. Uh, I do, but it'll have to be a short one. So we got right there. On this note, it, there should be a roll happening. I haven't had to deal with uh, single lines too much. So I'm just curious if I can do like a roll. Uh, oops. Timpani. Timpani. There you go. So as I was saying right here, if I were to do a roll. I wonder if I can get away with hitting it and then rolling it, like maybe on beat 
two or the half feet over. Yeah, that sounds kind of weird. Yeah, that might work better. Still kind of early. Yeah, all right. That sounds like a roll. So then we um, crescendo that. So let's go back. Mm, let's try again. Another one is instead of doing a roll, do a crescendo and just pray to God <laughs> that there's a patch that goes long enough. It's kind of early. That sounds better, more natural sounding. Let's go to the next bar. We're gonna go to B flat. Okay. I guess I don't need this, huh? Do I? trying to do I'm just trying to draw this guy in okay so yeah I don't know if I need it but um, I'll do that or let's see this one that sounds pretty good So timpani will probably just double with the low brass. So boom. So then again here. Oops. Pace. And then let's do a flam on this one. Next, bass drum. Probably very similar. Uh, we could do like a roll leading into it. Same idea, Let, let's try this roll idea. So this is kind of not quantized right, looks like. Yeah, and then here, let's do that. And then let's bring that out. So the first one would be the first, oh yeah, yeah th these aren't key switches. Oh, okay, so I can just do that instead. All right, and then I'll record this in. Try that again. Let's find zero on both of these. Boom. Okay. Hmm. Try one more time. It could probably be a little more drastic. Okay, great. nice crescendo there all right and then uh, we're gonna go and copy that over here great how much how are we doing on time we have about 30 minutes left good I like to do these in two hour segments I will be doing another one just so you know back to back uh, tomorrow at the same time 10 a.m. mountain daylight savings time so hope to see you guys there
Um, we'll, we'll keep this going. Um, I guess I did a bamboozled move here and instead of going to this part, which I wanted to do, um, I just worked this whole time on the transition part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's gonna change. That, that's, uh, the, the melody will be retained, but the feel is gonna be different. Okay, so let's keep going. So we have um, bass drum. Let's do crash cymbals. Okay, so on this guy we have whoop. Listening back here, I think I might just need to do the rolls on all of these. Oh, hello. Wrong spot. So it's right here. Well, that's weird. Copy. Paste. That's strange. What if I do one note? <laughs> okay, it's like my paste button is not working. Okay, I'll fix that later. And then here, same thing. All right. Mark trees are, are really cool for this kind of stuff. Um, I wonder if uh, triangle would be better. Triangle. Okay. Like that for the trills. So um, really common Percussion doubling is uh, whenever there's a woodwind trills, you do triangles with it. A soloistic line would be kind of cool. Um, um, I, I haven't forgot about you bassoons and cellos, or even uh, I don't even have double bass yet, so I, I gotta add that in sometime. Um, but let, let's try. Let's try this. So, speaking of cellos and bassoons, I think it'd be cool to double that with Glockenspiel, where the brass upper brass is playing right here. Um, and do like a just a small melodic motif. Da da no. I don't know. Let's see. Oops, wrong patch. Or tremolo? Hmm. Um. Hmm. 
Something like that. I mean, that that's actually more of a uh, trumpet line, isn't it? So that that's what I was thinking earlier. Like, if I did this, I don't know. I feel like it's too rich. I mean, it would work. Um, hmm. Maybe that's a brass line. Let's try this again. So back to cello. Something like uh, has to be has to poke through. So a staccato notes or a marcato. Do I have marcato? So think of what the glockenspiel is playing too. Something you have to play it twice. Um, it's kind of loud. Da na 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 na. Let's try the bells. I'm going to mute that for a sec. What sounds good on the bells? Oh, okay. We can double what the string is doing there. Butcher that last note. Okay. Uh, triplets. Okay. That sounds nice. Um, <laughs> it can't hit that last note, can it? Cool. Uh, da na na. Da na 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 na. Hmm. Oh, actually, let's not do Vista. Let's do. Hmm. Sounds okay. 
They're playing different notes. So. Except for that D. Well, and then the beginning. So just these last two notes are different. B flat against C. It's like a hybrid between the viola and the violin. Because I'm playing a G in the viola. That might work. Um, let's do that. And do that on the, the cellos that I muted. Okay, so going to this. Might as well just copy this over since it's easier. And then let's do a marcato. Uh, like that, and bring it down. Hello. Let's try that. A third. This is a third in the B flat chord. Okay, that's kind of cool. Hmm, it's kind of loud, so let's bring this down. This next note just kind of starts too soft. So, marcato, detaché. Let's try detaché. That compared to sustain. Let's try that again. What's another one? Marcato? Let's see, Marcato. Oh, okay. No, nope. it's too short. Hmm. I almost need like a sus accent in, uh, patch. And I, I, I decided not to do sus accent patches. <laughs> well, there's, there's one thing I might need to change then. But um, anyways, let's go back to... Let's do try a legato. No, it just needs a little accent. change that note. Let's go to here, bring that out. Okay, that's the idea. So I have to do that for both the cellos, bassoons, and bells, which I got the bells down. Let's layer that uh, cello line in Vista as well. Okay. Again, Avista is not a staccato style library, but it can play staccato if you shorten it a little bit. I mean, it's it's not the greatest, but like if I bar barely pr press on it, it has a nice staccato feel. Okay, so but that'll layer give it some body. Um, and actually, now I think about it, I wonder if the, the cellos are too high. I mean, it's nice. Let's, let's hear how that sounds with this. Uh, 
it's so busy that it's hard to hear, but let's try it. <laughs> That, that horn is masking it. Um, so I'll just bring it back up. Okay. Let's just look at all the strings. See what they're doing. Cello line is still underneath the viola line, which is good. Um, let's do that. -na 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 -na. Maybe do a crescendo. Something like that. Maybe a little bit of juice there too. Like that. I have an idea. Um, the cello can also maybe uh, get, gain some energy and uh, volume even if I just do a tremolo. Um, something like that. Let's see. But then, you know, the Vista again doesn't have that. So another idea is I could layer it with Jaeger instead. Um, Again. Yeah, it's we're at pretty much full volume for that cello. Well, I, I guess I can bring this down a little bit. why I brought it down so much. That sounds even better. Um, but what am I trying to say? So here, yeah, it's like it's tippy top volume, but I guess I could just, or instead of doing that, I can just bring this up more like that. Even this one, just a little more. It may help. Um, another thing I could do before going on is bring these dynamics up. Da 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 da. With the accent on that next beat. Okay, let's call it good for the cellos and now the bassoons. So we have this going into there. Uh, there's two ways to copy and paste. I've, I'm trying to get better or be more efficient at things. So um, one thing, if you're within a reach, you can go like this with the range tool. It's actually a little faster because then I don't have to cut, copy, and then uh, glue. So what I mean is uh, the split tool. Split it, glue it back afterwards. That's kind of cool. If you want to be really fancy, go into these, change the articulations on that as well. Actually, it sounds better with that right there. This one. Let's actually bring this in a little bit. Okay. All right. So now we have this section complete, I believe. Am I missing anything? Uh, just the double bass, uh, which most likely what I'll do with double bass is just double the tuba stuff. So that's not a big deal. Um, uh, might as well just do that before we call it good for today. So let's add that in. Um, should I do EWO 
base or something else. Let's just do the opus because the, the opus sounds good for this kind of music. Here, uh, let's go ahead and double the tuba there. And then uh, let's make sure it sounds good. So I'll solo it. Let's check that articulation set right there. Oh, it says none. Interesting, staccato. I'm kind of curious now, does this have any articulations? <laughs> it doesn't, that's funny. It actually still sounded good though. I wonder if I should just keep it that way or do that. Got me thinking now. Cool. Uh, yeah, I think it sounds good. It's a positive change. What I'm going to do though is on these downbeats. Uh, yeah, also, so beats one and three on each of these bars that I'm here, right here. Um, I'm going to change that to a marcato and see how that sounds. happening I got the bass doing the same thing all right just for that realism um, just on the chord changes on this one this time oops I did the wrong ones uh, let's do that again Whoop. Mark. A little too much. Okay, so um, basses are good. I feel like if I solo the s string family, let's see how that sounds. Hmm. Actually, before I do that, let's go back here. Okay, it blends pretty well. Let's listen to this now. So there's kind of a loss in energy every time uh, it changes the notes. Oh, I see why. So these are uh, legato patches um, besides the, let's see, how should I do this? Let's go here to delete overlaps or f fixed pedals, apply legato, that's what I meant. So you do the apply legato. Um, Actually, let's go positive five. That should be overlapping. Okay, on this one, 
Let's delete overlap. And then this can do the repetition. Do they have repetition on this one? They don't. Okay, that's, that's okay. Maybe I'll do sus on that. too much this has to overlap a little more yeah that's better So, anything else? Uh, I feel like tr uh, the percussion might be a little thin, a little weak. Uh, we could double the snare as an idea. Um, we can add more bass drum notes for sure. Let's see. <laughs> Um, let's do sus suspended symbol. Sus 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 suspended. So let's try that right at 20. Um, yeah. I was having second thoughts. So I don't need to do curves, I think, for this. Let's just do that. Hmm. Okay, that needs to be earlier, so. One, two, three. And this needs to be higher. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's pretty good. That's pretty good. I don't know if I need mark trees, but um, like what I did last time, I did this little note. Maybe a shorter note. Yeah. Um, I'm digging it. Let's see. I do looks good um, I could probably go in just a hair earlier Great. okay so we got that um, chimes I'm looking in the innards here. Chimes would be cool too.
I wonder if I should go or that's kind of cool let's let's record that in That is coming quite along here. So let's do one other uh, thing to clean this up. So you notice how I have a muted note and then I have this other event right here. So these two. Um, what would be good is to get rid of that but uh, a cool trick is you can go up here or um, um, less work would be to double the, the version. So duplicate version. And then uh, we can call this um, version 1.03, which is the same uh, file format of this version here. And then delete that. That way, in case I need to go back to it, I could just go back and see what I printed, which is below that. And that's really quick that way. Um, another thing you can do is you can actually get rid of your audio stuff, uh, or not get rid of it, but move it into a different folder. Because right now I'm in a kind of like a MIDI folder that expands like an accordion out. It's all MIDI content. So sometimes I like to go here, press enter, and then um, look at the MIDI notes. But because there's an audio track in there, it opens up the audio track as well. So sometimes it's good to just uh, clean that up and so that you don't have to deal with that. Um, any other notes like this where it's um, whited out, I'll delete and clean it up. So I'm actually going to now merge all of these MIDI events together. For good housekeeping, um, looks good. Oh, we got this Hollywood wood, Hollywood winds. So let's put that in as well. All right, good. And all of these are activated right now. Great. Now would be um, to figure out what's going to happen on this next step. So after this. <laughs> Um, so energy level will have to stay up as as that's playing and then uh, the melody so let's listen to melody again that i recorded last week Let's do this. Um, before we call it good for today, I'm going to mute the chord stuff, even the harmonies here. Okay, And let's put this line somewhere down below. Um, let's say brass or strings I'm not sure let's just do brass for now let's delete this let's go over here let's do fix notes to the pedals ah we don't want that apply legato okay it's kind of high and let's do a quick shaping oh, 
sustain these go away. It's, it's getting there. Um, let's do it again. Three, four, one. some breath marks definitely at the end of these phrases one that sounds kind of funny I think it's because it's, uh, this is a my sketching um, patch and it, it's uh, like triggering a horn or something else because the uh, trumpets can't play that low Let's hear that back. Die out in energy. Da na 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 na. One, two, three, four, like that. One, two, three, four. And also this right here. We'll bring it up. Okay. All right, so that's the idea, and I'll continue this from today to tomorrow, same time. Um, also, uh, if you like what you're watching, please subscribe if you haven't already. Um, you know, there's probably a small handful of people who are subscribed that watch, and there's some people that kind of, you know, um, happen to stumble into my channel, which is great too. Uh, if, if you are one of those people and uh, are watching this right now, later on, please subscribe to my channel just to uh, gain more visibility, help my channel, support. I uh, really appreciate that. So let's go ahead and press play and let's see how we do. So let's delete the muted notes. Um, let's see here. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, actually, sorry, one sec. Let me do one thing. I just realized my piano, I'm gonna press undo. I'm gonna copy that. Okay, let's go back to the undo. I'm gonna do that. And um, let's do a new version so we can get away from that. Okay, going back to where we were. And I can delete all my muted notes. And let's press play.
next section that I will start tomorrow. Yeah. Now I'm kind of thinking about what will happen next, and it almost makes sense to play the same uh, A section over here, and then even offset this part even more so as a B section. Um, so we'll we'll see. We'll see if we do that as a delayed gratification kind of thing. <laughs> Anyways, um, let me go ahead and switch back to my other interface here. So if I go here and I do this, hey, hey. So um, thanks for watching, guys. I really do appreciate the support, uh, you know, and all the shout outs, uh, Lori Pananen and DC. Thanks for uh, commenting and watching. Um, uh, feel free always to shout out and say hi. Um, and getting more comments and feedback really does help me. And um, I, I, I do enjoy challenging myself as well to keep writing as much as I can. Um, you know, as time goes on, uh, the, the most valuable thing to do as a composer, if you are wanting to be one um, um, in, your, in your life or as a career even, um, I would just say keep creating. Don't let all these other things um, stop you from creating. Um, so, you know, I mean, there will be times like, for instance, I'm, I've am i spent uh, a good two months on this Vian Ensemble template. But um, now now I that I invested that time, I'm going to try to not buy any more sample libraries. I'm going to just try to write more. Um, especially because as projects come up, um, this is the time to really scale now. Uh, so, you know, there, there's periods where you might do a little bit of uh, downtime where you have to focus on other things. Technology is uh, a big factor. And so, I mean, yes, there are barriers, but my takeaway is um, just write as much as you can because that, that, that's the most important part. Um, you know, we we get so caught up in all the weeds that uh, we we forget that um, creating is is the most important thing. Um, I mean, besides you know your money finances too, but you gotta you gotta write. You gotta keep um, uh, flexing those creative muscles, and the more you do that, the better off we all will be. So, anyways, thanks. And I will see you guys next time, tomorrow, um, uh, as a matter of fact, at 10 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time. So I hope to see you guys then. All right. See you guys.